Maggie Cross. Cross. Hi, my name is Anna. And I'm Peyton. And today... <laughs> what are we doing today? Today, we are back for episode 7, Road to Kingdom Reactions, which means we have three performances to react to today. They are the Your Song performances for Pentagon, Very Very, and The Boys. Before we get started, um, I got the explanation wrong last week. It's not the groups choosing a song that they wanted to perform. It was the groups choosing a song that they wanted to see another group perform on the show. So I forget the name of who pointed that out in the comments last week for last week's videos, but thank you for pointing it out. So this week, neither of us have seen any of the episodes, so we haven't seen the rehearsal footage or the explanations for what the concepts are. And that also means that we don't know how eliminations play out or any of that. By the time this is posted, we will have seen all of that, but at the time of watching, we're going in blind, so. Yeah. So as always, long video, pinned comment down below with time stamps. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started with the first video, Pentagon doing Follow by Monsta X. I'm nervous. I am too. Okay, I remember from like the trailers at the end of the episode that one of the group's concepts is Aladdin. But I, think I don't think it's Pentagon. It's not this one. Okay. I, I saw, I remember on one of the comments, I think it's like Pharaohs or something. Oh, this one? Oh, which, yeah, makes sense. Okay. I literally <laughs> see it in the background now. Whoa. I'm curious what they're going to do with the song though, because the original song was just really intense the whole Whoa. time. All the gold makes sense. They look expensive. I think in the original they use a lot of gold though too. Oh, they're singing live. Ooh. Oh, that was cool. I did not expect the suck to be the one doing follow. What do you mean? Oh. There was like a growl in there, like a roar. I mean like, when I said what's up, uh, I'll just explain later. Okay. Oh. I feel like I'm being attacked. <laughs> I don't know. They both just had like really strong energies. Oh. Ooh. Falsetto. Beautiful voice. Mm. They have something on their hand. It's like an eye. Oh, it's like the eye? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That was a satisfying shot, pulling back to add everything. As they opened. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that chord is cool. Wait! <laughs> what? <laughs> now I feel bad because I don't even remember if I had seen him before. hes I think he's been in it before because okay. I, he's my favorite. I wasn't sure. He's so large. <laughs> like he's so tall. I know. I was he's got a really big like... presence too. Oh. oh. There's just so many beats happening. I'm like slightly overwhelmed right now. The arm dance. Oh yeah, they've been doing a lot of like yells, roar, growl things vocally. Ooh. Wait, why are there like two sides? What's happening? That can't be the ending. Right? 
Oh, okay. 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 I was <laughs> like, whoa. Well, <laughs> they wouldn't end it that way. Is he gonna be the king? Is he the king? Ooh, Wait, is he their oh, I was gonna say, is he their youngest? <laughs> Because I know he's one of the younger ones. Oh, leader. Interesting. He's like intimidates me so much. I feel like I'd be so scared to meet him and like see him in real life. He's your age. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. Wow. That was relentless. Like that was so much going on. The first thing I wanted to say was so I said it in the reaction, I was like, oh, I'm surprised Usok is doing that part when they were doing like the fa -la -la. I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> and then we did the fa -la -la -la. I'm really, I'm not gonna sing, but everyone knows what part I'm talking about. I was like, oh, I'm surprised Usok did that part because it's not that I don't think he can do it. Like obviously he sounded good and it was like a part that really fit well. It was more of just because that is more like along the lines of like vocals versus like Hui's like follow part is more kind of like growly and it seems more like something a rapper would do so i was just in interested to see that they switched those the second thing so the concept obviously they were doing like ancient egypt pharaoh's sarcophaguses is that sarcophagi i don't know what the plural is i'm sorry i don't think i've ever said that word in plural out loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously that was like the theme like it was very apparent my like one regret with it because i thought they pulled it off really well but my one regret was i said like they had the like eyes on their hands and I just wish that they had used it more because I'm not sure if it was supposed to represent like a curse or something. Like, you know how in movies when people go after like the mummy, there's a curse and you yeah. have to like outrun it or whatever. So I wasn't sure if it was that or if it was more along the lines of like actually set in ancient Egypt and it was like a curse that had been put on them or a talisman. But I just wish that they had showed it more because there was really only one part that I can think of where it's really like part of the dance and it's when Shin Wang <laughs> does the thing in front of his face and then they all break. And that was really the only part where it felt like they were showing off the mark rather than it just being on their hands when they moved. And so that was like my biggest regret in the whole stage, just because I wanted to see it used more since it was there. And then just dance wise, wow, like I already said, so relentless, so intense. It never stopped. Even on the slower parts, there was something going on. Like I really think the calmest part was when Yoan is in the sarcophagus and then it goes immediately into the dance break. So it's like a very short break. I can't compare it directly to the Monster X dance just because like obviously they weren't using the original dance and also of all the Monster X songs this is not one that I'm as familiar with but in terms of like hard-hitting relentless like Pentagon did it they went for it the part that stuck out to me the most for the dance though was the part where he is sitting there and he's surrounded by the female backup dancers and they're doing the arm movements though um and it was so sharp and so together and I was like wow that looked so good because if they had been just like half a second off, it would have just like made it look so messy, but it was really, really good and really, really together. So yeah, like they executed it really well. It's just that there was so much going on. Like my heart's still kind of racing. My turn. <laughs> okay, so first observation. I think I said in the reaction too, the intro of the song made me think that the song was going to go in a very different direction than it ended up going in because the intro was like a little smoother and then like quieter and like obviously it's going to build throughout the song but it made me think like oh my god this arrangement is going to be completely different from the original and then immediately after the intro like the dance relentless high intensity like for the rest of the song and like there were breaks and stuff like the breaks were really small and then it would immediately come back in and like compared to the original song like obviously there are differences like in the bridge part but the overall vibe and feeling and intensity level of the song is very similar next thing is something that i'm kind of like eh about is that the outro part when Wusuk goes up to the throne and everyone is already there like in position the music goes silent for a little while and we're like oh is this over and then a small instrumental comes back in for that part i just felt like it was kind of awkward i wish instead that they had like kept a quiet instrumental throughout the whole thing like either completely gotten rid of the silence or made it much smaller than it was or Another idea that I had was just keep the intense music going and then as the intense music is happening, they're all going into their position and then have an impactful ending, like big ending with Wusok in the throne. And then something that I thought was good and I liked was in the song, they have a lot of like growl sounds that they are doing and kind of like yelling parts because I thought that it just made the whole stage more like animalistic, wild, like unrestrained, really intense. Mm. I keep saying the word intense because like they just roar 
all really intense like the yeah. look in their eyes the way that they were moving like everything about it all of them were embodying this intensity so much that it was really overwhelming one part that i think of in particular is like what is it musak and yuto's part mm. where like the two of them are like feeding off each other and it's just it was just like really i don't know overwhelming yeah. you know huh? they're both your age right what? <laughs> no. Like you know that, right? No, I didn't know. They seem so much older. I was like, oh, they're like super, super opas. They're both your age. Kino too. What? <laughs> wow, my face is really red. Okay, anyway. All right, and with that, moving on. So next we have Peri Peri doing Coco Bebe by Mama Moo. Okay. They're the ones doing Aladdin concept, right? Yes, this is Aladdin. Okay. I'm also really excited. When it come in, oh, the baby's playing Aladdin. <gasps> Peyton, are you okay? He's a baby. I know. Oh, I liked how that matched up. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh, they're tossing that around. I was like, what just happened? All right, so who's Jafar? <laughs> Are they gonna have a monkey? Are they gonna have a genie? <gasps> oh. Is that the one? Huh? Why is he black? black? Is he Jafar? <laughs> oh my gosh, flying. Oh my carpet. gosh, they have the magic carpet. <laughs> Okay, I really like how they've like literally embodied their concept so well. Like it's so clear. It's so clear. And I like even if I hadn't known before. It. Yeah. There'd be no question. Uh. Oh, he's the prince now. Prince Ali. Ooh. <laughs> this instrumental is interesting. I'll explain why later. Once I like have fully formulated thoughts. Oh, 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 oh. you're right, he is oh the gosh, he is <laughs> Okay. Yes. Oh my oh. gosh, he even has the stick. And he like oh my gosh. Oh that's fun. Uh. Oh, oh. Now I wish there was a genie. Oh, the music switched up. Ooh. Oh. oh. It's okay. It's fine. Nine six nineteen. Is that like their debut date? Is it? We we'll have to check. Oh, Come did in. they debut in twenty nineteen? I don't remember. Cause I know they were one of their. I thought they were twenty eighteen. I don't remember. I don't know. Honestly, this really does remind me of like an ending scene, ending scene in the musical, since all of the outfits are Same. so different. Like the finale. Cause like we've said that other stages remind us of musicals, but all the outfits are like coordinated the, in those. The outfits look like a musical. This one. Oh, oh my gosh! Peyton is very happy. I'm very, very happy. Ha 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 ha. Wait, but why was Kangmin not holding the Okay, it's okay. I loved it very, very much. 
obviously just starting out like super different in terms of the original stage with this dance, with the choreography, with the staging. Mama Moo's version is just so different. Like it's almost understated. I love the original version. I love Mama Moo, but man, I loved this very, very much. Like when I first heard they were doing the song, I was like, okay, what are they going to do with it? Because the original is so understated. And obviously on a show like this, like we've been saying every week, like you have to have bigger or like more like eye-catching performances because it's a performance competition show. I mean like obviously there is the mistake when he, the member playing Jafar like dropped the cane and I like was reminded of the fact that this was all filmed the same time as the ones that we watched last week when there were also issues and again like I really do just think sometimes something is off in the air with a theater and also they are going what fifth out of six and so they've also seen all of the mistakes that have happened before and like that makes you nervous if you're sitting backstage and you're watching other performances have like mishaps that makes you nervous too but like they covered it well he just picked it up and kept going he didn't freeze he didn't like show it on his face it was fine my one question is we said it in the middle i was like numbers six six nineteen what does that mean and we were like is it their debut date and so we went and checked um as far as i can tell and obviously i could be wrong because don't believe everything you see on the internet kids but um as far as i could tell they had like some pre-debut stuff in 2018 and then they officially debuted in January of 2019. So what does 619 mean? Please let us know. I guess probably the last thing I'm going to say. My favorite part of the whole dance and like it was very hard to pick a favorite part just because I think if you watched me watch this you know that I was just having a great time. But during the... Anna can you sing it for me? You know what part I'm talking about. I don't know the words but it's the the... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This is why I have Anna around. <laughs> because the percussion in that part is so strong and their movements were so very, very percussive. And I just really loved how it like matched up and I just thought it was so good. Like the dance was very musical-like. Like the movements they were doing was more musical-like rather than we're putting a dance to a musical stage like they were actually dancing like it was a musical too the staging was like a musical i loved it very very much and i'm gonna keep talking about it so we're gonna let anna go for now first thing i should say is that like i also really enjoyed this performance but anyways on very very much <laughs> i said during the reaction like oh this instrumental is interesting so the reason why i said that is because in the intro part where they're putting the wanted sign for Kangmin up on the wall, they had just like this guitar line playing and that gave me really like Spanish Latin vibes. But then like as the song went on in the instrumental and you could still hear the guitar, it did give more Arabian vibes just because it was like in minor and also just because it was a guitar that was being played and doing that line instead of, I don't know what the instruments are called, but like those instruments that give more like arabian sounds and are used traditionally in that music next comment was also like peyton it really really did feel like a musical we've said in reactions to other performances on the show like oh it felt like a musical but this one really felt like a musical because it was just like blatantly telling you the story instead of more of an interpretive take to it it literally is telling you a story like this is happening then this is happening then this is happening the outfits the costumes that they were wearing really added to that as well and because of that the ending dance really felt like the finale like closing number of a musical and then that just gave me like flashbacks to high school musical theater good flashbacks bad flashbacks not really sure with this stage everyone was in the outfits for their character and they're all so different and distinct and unique that it just made me think of the finale closing number. This is my last comment. Something that I really, really liked that they did to accentuate the ending even more is towards the end when Kangmin does his speaking part when like it's completely silent and then it goes, the music comes back in and then the dancing for the end. They actually had a modulation a modulation is just like a fancy term for a key change. And from what I remember, the original song doesn't have a modulation. If it does, then apologies. It like conveys more energy and like keeps you on the edge of the seat because it's like everything else sounds the same, but then the key has changed. So you're like, what's happening? A perfect example of this is Love on Top by Beyonce because how many key changes can you have in one song? Who knows? But anyways, I really, really like this performance. Next one. Last one. Next. We are back now for the last video from round three, the boys covering Vix's Shangri-La, which is Do Wong Gyeong. Do Wong Gyeong. And they've named it Quasi Una Fantasia. 
I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Also, I love Vix. I do too. Also, this dance I love because they dance with fans in the what original. Is this? What's happening? What are the flowers for? She loves me. He loves me not. Oh my gosh. They're barefoot. Oh my is god, it's gonna be contemporary, contemporary dance. Peyton's so is. excited. It already is. Oh my god. Oh my god. He pointed his foot. It was like Michael Jackson. No, that's a modern move. Really? Yeah. Peyton's gonna have a lot to say. <laughs> My standards are gonna be so much higher though. Oh. Oh? Huh? Wait, what? Why is it? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's like they're. It kind of made me think like they're the piano keys. Oh. Uh. What is this? They really went classical. Wow. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not gonna talk as much because it's contemporary. What is the door for? What is the door for? Oh, you just I walked know. through the door? Oh. I thought that they were gonna do more with the door. Oh, 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 what? Oh my gosh, that's so scary. Not really. I would be scared. <gasps> the skirts! I would be scared, Peyton. Canada Bros! <gasps> Canada Line! His hair oh, is beautiful. They're all wearing it now. Oh, oh, they already had it. They just pulled it out. Dancing. I love shadow. <gasps> they did not. They really out here using Beethoven like this. <laughs> it's like Sakura. That's what they are. Oh, on the mic. Well, but the flowers bloomed as it went yeah. on. Oh, is he gonna go confess? Huh? Huh? I was not expecting that. To oh, wait, what did it say at the top? Oh, dang it, I missed it. <laughs> no. Oh, they're so beautiful. I was so much quieter during that because it was like my style of uh, dancing. Uh, uh. Moonlight Sonata opens the gates to par paradise. Moonlight Sonata opens the gates Did to paradise. Did they use Moonlight Sonata in that? They're beautiful. They are beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. I didn't talk a lot during the actual thing, or like not as much as I usually do, especially when watching the boys. And the reason for that is my background as a dancer is I did ballet and modern and contemporary, those sorts of styles. So I am much more critical and aware of what they are doing rather than when I watch something that's more hip-hop because I just don't have that foundation. So I was like more zeroed in on their technique and on watching it. So that's why I was quieter, but it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying it. Like I really enjoyed the stage. I thought it was beautiful. It lived up to all expectations. Anna already knows what I'm gonna say. 
and she knew before I even told her. So my biggest disappointment was that they like didn't point their feet properly. And what I mean by that is sometimes they just straight up weren't pointing their feet. Like they'd be doing a movement and their foot would just kind of be there or like be almost flexed. And like that really bothers me because it breaks the line. And then sometimes they would be pointing their foot but not pointing their ankle, which is very common in people who don't grow up in this style of dance, especially if you're more trained in like hip hop or something like that because you're not pointing your feet as often. Pretend this is my leg <laughs> and this is my foot and this is my ankle. Okay. So this is a flexed foot. And then if I tell, like I've even told people before, like point your foot and they'll point their toes. But when you're dancing contemporary or ballet or one of those styles, you have to point through your ankle because that's what continues the line so that there's not that break at your ankle, at your joint. I can't fault them just because I know that majority of them do not have a background in the style of dance and you could tell the ones who had a background in the style of dance because it's also just something awkward to do like if you're not training in it when you're younger when you get to be an adult and you're told to like point your ankle like you don't have the muscles there to do that but as someone who did the style of dance it like bothers me and that brings me to my next point which is that Jiyeon did this so beautifully. I like even commented on it during the reaction. I was like, oh my god, his foot is pointed so beautifully. I was telling Anna this beforehand, but I think if you've watched this channel, you generally can see that like, I love Q. And I don't usually talk about Jiyeon as much just because I think his style has not been showcased as much in these performances. Um, but he was really showcased in this. And I was like, oh my gosh, you are beautiful. I felt like he was show showcased more in this performance than on previous ones and he deserved it another like just super quick observation i really liked what they did with the skirts and how they used them as a prop and i was really hoping going into this that they would have a prop because in the original shangri-la dance vix dances with the fans and it's very impactful because it's so sharp and this is a more fluid like softer version of shangri-la so i didn't know what they would do but the skirts were so pretty and then they used them to make the flower around tenny it was also beautiful the skirts being used to make the flower around Chani really reminds me of like Korean fan dancing. Just, well, for one thing, the Korean fans typically use the feathers are pink, but also a lot of times they'll like make flowers around a person and then like move in a circle around the person. So it really made me think of that. So that made me like it even more when yeah. she told me that. <laughs> so obviously this is very contemporary and like if you want a perfect example of a beautiful contemporary opening, the part where they start the actual dance where Sonu is in the front and then they go down the line and then they all break out and there's so much happening like Hanyan does a like shoulder roll backwards and then they lift someone and then it goes into Hyunjae and he's leaning and it's just beautiful and I was like oh my gosh this looks like an actual contemporary performance like it doesn't look like it belongs on a k-pop survival show and then the last thing I want to say is about the shadow dancing in the middle where Younghoon goes behind the screen and first I want to clarify so I made I had like a visible reaction I was like <laughs> when we were watching it has nothing to do with the boys um and not even with like the staging it was just there was one backup dancer after she hands Younghoon the flower she turns around and she does a Sinead turn backwards away from the screen and her legs were apart and bent which is like something that you would get and I personally have been yelled at for in dance class so that was why I was like oh because it was just like so obviously that there was like something wrong with the technique that was being used. But in terms of the actual shadow dancing, it was beautiful. And the reason that I really liked that they used it is because, so shadow dancing is typically incorporated into performances when you're trying to tell a story or like almost a summary of the whole story that you're saying. And that's what they did. Like Younghoon gets the flower and then the dancers like go back and they actually sprout into the tree. And then directly after that, he steps out from behind the curtain and it goes down the line and the branch blooms and then he, and then the tree is there and it's like the ending. So I just thought that was a really special touch. I just talked so much, but I just had so much to say. That wasn't even everything I could say. You can't give me a contemporary dance and then expect me to just be like, yeah, it was good. Okay, with all of that rambling out of the way, Anna's turn. First thing that I want to say is, Peyton, just to answer your question at the end of our reaction, yes, there was Moonlight Sonata in this performance. So I love Vix and I also really like this song. It's one of the Vix songs that I'm not as familiar with because I'm more into like older Vicks and it is very like minimal and like understated I would say especially in the beginning half like the first verse it really was as understated as Vicks is it's basically like only a piano line playing and then like slowly some effects are added the way that they're singing 
was reflecting the intensity of the instrumental at the same time. Especially in the first verse where like almost all of them are singing in head voice and then the only time someone isn't singing in head voice I think is Hyunjae and as the instrumental is growing during Hyunjae's part, Hyunjae's voice instead is singing in like mixed voice, chest voice more but then the instrumental pulls back again and then it's Chani's part I believe and Chani is singing in like an airy breathier tone again. So the difference between these three, I feel like I need to demonstrate. I'm talking about like airy, breathy, head voice, mixed voice, and then chest voice. And mixed is essentially like a mixture of the two around it. So airy would be more like of an ah, and then mixed would be like an ah, and then chest voice would be like an ah. I hope you are able to hear the difference. I could hear it and I'm okay. not a vocalist, so. So that's the difference and I feel like their singing was really reflected in like how the song was working. Another thing that I thought was really cool about the music was in the second verse how the storyline that's happening is more like this is the conflict of the storyline. So like Sanu on the door and is being like rocked around and the music was reflecting that as well. There's these haunting effects that are happening and it's in minor too. And then the last thing that I want to say was, although I kind of wish that they would have continued their story with like the crown from the past two rounds, I still think that the storyline was beautiful as well. And like at the end, they still had that like line phrase written thing. The Moonlight Sonata opens the door to paradise. And then after you said that whole thing about how shadow dancing is used to basically be like a summary of the story, I thought that was really cool because they play the Moonlight Sonata during that shadow dancing part, which ties into like the story of like the Moonlight Sonata opens the door to paradise. So I just thought it was really cool and it was beautiful. Okay, TLDR for the whole episode, Peyton, go! You have oh to speak God. on behalf of both of us. Oh no! <laughs> they were all vastly different and yet they were all still very impressive. Once again, we are blown away by the showmanship and just like everything about it. And like the fact that we're now gonna have to go watch the episode and find out that one of these groups is eliminated is really upsetting me. I mean, not necessarily one of these three groups, but like one of the six groups because they are all working so hard. If you couldn't tell by our reactions, we'll just like speak it into existence. We loved it. That being said, if you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and join us next week for the last episode of Road to Kingdom. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> okay, bye!